All right, flows and actions. So we've got a page, we've got elements on the page. Now we wanna make our elements interactive, whether that's when the user interacts with them or when other things happen on the page. We do that with actions and we can do sets of actions together and string them into flows. So the first thing is we've been looking at this elements list on the left. We can switch that to the flows tab here and we'll see all the flows for the page we're selected on. Now every page comes with the default three flows, auto save, page binding, and page load. And they're basically some built-in builder functionality, very basic. You can choose to remove those, you can get rid of them if you don't want them, but most of the time you need them. And then beyond that, we're just gonna create our own flows, we're gonna trigger them when we want. So to create a flow, I can hit this new flow button here, call it, whatever I want, and it'll pop open on the right side. You can see I have the option to add an action or to nest another flow inside of here, or I can copy and paste actions. So the first thing I'll do is hit add action, and there are a ton of actions. And what you can do is you can add or remove style class, for instance, and then string together other actions like creating a data record. And once you string them all together, and decide whether you wait in between or don't wait by clicking here, that will be your flow. So in this case, I just dropped a add style class action. It has specific inputs like the style class to add, the element I wanna add it to, you know, just selecting from the elements on that page. And then I have a data create record where I'm actually, I would create, I would select from my data collections and do more. So each of these actions is pretty different um, inside of it. And you can create your own completely custom actions, which is a separate lesson, but you can use JavaScript to write them. You can pull in um, NPM server-side stuff even. You can do a lot with actions. But for the sake of this overview, just know that you can string them together in flows here, save your flows, and then when you wanna trigger a flow, so say I want to, when this element is clicked, trigger that flow, you select an element and in its properties, under events, it has click, this one anyway has click, mouse enter and mouse leave. I can just select that flow. Now when I run this and a person clicks on that element, it will run this test flow. Now the actual events, you can use any web event, any JavaScript web event, so there's a ton here. But usually depending on the element, it'll default to one or two, 